Hello and welcome back. This is Stephen Kuhn and we're going to continue our journey into Apache NiPy. So if you're new to the channel, I please take your time to uh, check out the first couple of videos, the other, I think, five so far. And uh, so you can catch up and get an idea. Uh, really, the gist of these videos is to continue building upon the last video and adding more and more to enrich our data, to enrich the flow in the data pipeline that we're creating inside of NiPy. So we have already have our USGS data, right? We're getting that when we go into it here. We get it from a, a text file. We're doing some splitting to it and everything like that. And we're writing it out back to archive it into another CSV file. And then we're also sending it into our database or MySQL database. So I thought I'd grab another data source for something different. So let's go ahead and create a new process group because this isn't going to be necessarily related, but we could use it to uh, do something with our other data. This is going to be Twitter. So let's go ahead and get this process group up here, get inside of it, and then bring our first processor out there. Inside of Apache NiFi, when you're looking at the 286 different processors that are available to use, you have one for Twitter in here already called get Twitter. Now if we take a look at this one, it tells us it pulls status changes from Twitter streaming API. Okay, well that's all we really need to know. And it does say you need a consumer key and access tokens and they're marked as sensitive. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's right click on it, view the usage. Okay. Now in here we do see it pulls status changes from the Twitter streaming API. We recovered that part, right? And it does have a couple tags on it, properties. Okay, now let's look at these properties here. We have a Twitter endpoint, max client re error retries, a consumer key, a consumer secret. And these are provided by Twitter. Actually, all four of these are because we get an access, access token and access token secret. Then we also have a couple of other options that are available, like a language, a common separate list of languages which tweaks should be fetched from. And... Uh, terms to filter on, ideas to follow, and locations uh, to filter on as well. And the location one, the way you do it is basically you're doing set of co you're doing coordinates to create a bounding box. So that's how you're setting that one up, or you can do multiple bounding box as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get out here. We have nothing else we really need to look at there. So first things first, let's go into it, the properties. Uh, we can't do anything here, right? We need to get those uh, tokens and consumer keys first. So what you'll need to do is go to developer.twitter.com, create an account here, like I already have one set up. And then once you have a, an account set up and everything, you'll go ahead and do create an app. You'll fill in your name, you provide provide a description, fill out the required sections. Uh, you have to do website URL, it doesn't really matter what you do there. Scroll down below and then in this case, it's required to tell us how you're going to be using it. Provide a description here as well. I mean, you go ahead and say create. There is minimum character length that you need to do in here. So I'm going to go back because I already have one created. So let's go back to apps, details. You can see I just put whatever in here for mine. And then we have a section called keys and tokens. Inside of the keys and tokens, we have our consumer API keys and then our access token and uh, access token and in the access token key secret. So these won't do you any good because right after this, I'm gonna be resetting these, so they're not gonna be very much help to you. But uh, right now, let me go ahead and uh, grab this one, API key. I'm gonna head back over here. I'll put that inside the consumer key. Paste that in there. See, it's kept sensitive value, value set, so you don't get to see it. We'll go back to the other one, grab the secret. Nope, oh, not that one. Put that in there. We're gonna regenerate this real quick. Okay, now we have an access token. Access token is done. And then we have our secret. All right, that's all done. It's all filled in, so we're good to go there. So what are we going to do next here? Well, let's go ahead and apply this. The rest of these settings should be fine. There's a Twitter endpoint 
So if you select all of these, you see sample endpoint, fire host endpoint, and the filter endpoint. Each one of them comes with their own description, the endpoint that provides public data, aka the garden hose. Uh, and then you have the endpoint that provides access to all tweets, and one that uh, filtered by specific terms or user IDs. We're just sticking with the sample endpoint, that'll work for what we're doing, and we're going to go ahead and apply. Well, now that we get that, we know it's going to be coming in JSON format. I already know that, so we need to do something with it. But what are we going to do? Well, let's, first of all, let's just get some sample data and see what it looks like. So I'm just going to put a processor down here that we can connect to. And let's go ahead and right-click on this. Give it a second. Oh, quickly, it's already populating. We've got 127 of them in our queue. Let's take a look at these. We've got varying sizes here, but uh, this one looks like it's probably empty or not full. And there you go. So it's deleted status and the ID and all that good stuff. So this one's not what we're looking for. Let's take a look at the next one. Let's go ahead and format it. Okay, so we have JSON here. So you have special emojis and all that good stuff in here as well. Uh, you're going to get every language under the sun. So may not be helpful, may be helpful. But uh, if we take a look here, we see we have something. Well, let's find another one real quick. Might be clearer for us. That one's pretty busy too. Let's just see what else we got. No, oh, doesn't matter. Okay, we'll stick with this one for right now. So we have the created at. So we have time here. And we have the day of the week, the month, the day. And then the time. It's not telling us the actual offset for the real offset. It's just zeroed out here. And then it says 2020 year at the end. A little bit odd for a format there, but okay. We also see... What appears to be a tweet ID. And then that's converted in the string in that one. Uh, we also have the text itself of the tweet. So that would be the text. The source of the tweet. So it looks like uh, this source indicates the inside the string or the URL there, what device type it came from. So Twitter for Android. Uh, I've seen some that show Twitter for iPhone and stuff like that too. And then a couple other information. A lot of it will be null because it's not going to be provided. Some data is not going to be provided. Now we do see down here by user, we see that the hierarchy splits down a little bit further. Underneath the user, we have ID. So more likely the individual ID of the user, what their number is, their value. We have the name of the user. And we have the screen name of the user as well. Uh, location, not filled in, or it looks like it's populated. And then uh, description and a couple of other things as well. Now some other ones we're probably going to want to try to grab out here is follower count, friend count, eh, listen count, favorites count, so how many favorites they probably have, and the status count. But we'll probably want to grab followers and friends. We'll just do that. It's good numbers to just know, I guess. But uh, it's information we can utilize somehow. Uh, unfortunately, we're not we're not getting the. Oh, this one does have geo enabled, so you do see geo. So it's true down here. And I don't, I'm not sure. It's probably the one on the location up here. Probably applies to this one, but not to this one, next section down here, right? Which uh, we're not interested in this. When I've looked into it, it's more like uh, retweet, retweets and stuff like that. Really, I just care about some simple information getting out here that might be helpful for anything that we're trying to do or enrich our data. So one thing we want to do here is ooh, find another example. Uh, maybe one's a little bit clearer for us. What's this one look like? Uh, it's that time of day where we're getting tweets from different parts of the world right now. Oh, they aren't. Let's go back in there. Yeah, let's try a couple others. Okay, you know what? We'll just work with this. But we do see that pattern where source is related to the type of device that's being used to do the tweeting on for the application and stuff, right? So there's a couple. I don't want everything in here. So we want to trim this up. So the way I'm going to do that is a familiar way we're used to. We 
are going to, first of all, let me save the sample that I just grabbed. Okay, got that saved in Notepad++. I'm going to go ahead and empty this so I can remove the weight. And then what I'm going to use is a Jolt. JSON transform, or Jolt transform JSON. So we're going to add that in there. And we're actually going to use it very familiar to what we're used to. So let's go ahead and go back out to the next level, back up. We're going to go back into USGS data. And inside of here, we're going to go to our Jolt Transform JSON, and we're going to grab what we already have there. Now let's go back. Whoops, wrong one. Not that. This, go backwards. I'm not thinking right. Go back into our Twitter data, and let's go to our Jolt, Advanced, and in the input, or in the spec, we're going to go ahead and paste the same spec we've used before. I'm going to go grab that input for JSON that we had for the sample. There we go. That's in there too. And now we're going to decide on what we do want to keep. So one thing I know I want to keep is created at, even though it's zeroed out basically, I still want to keep it. I mean, it's actually this, I believe this is actually correct for the time. So where in the world, actually I need to look at UTC real quick. We'll have to find out in a minute. But um, let's go ahead and populate this information. There we go. And let's get the ID string so we don't have to get, well, let's take a look real quick. And I got a feeling that's gonna give us something I don't wanna see or I don't need to deal with right now. We do want the text, right? So we can switch through text. And then let's grab the source. May not use it, but you never know. Might be nice to know which devices are most common. Okay, and then we have, that's all I want from this section up here before we get to name. So now we get to name. So ID was the, let's see, truncated, source was the last one. So we're gonna stop right here. Add a line, and we're gonna say user, open that one up, close it, because it's not gonna match anything, and now we're in the next level. So down here we have ID, ID string, I'm not necessarily word, uh, I don't know if I, oh, we'll go ahead and grab user. So we'll grab the ID, whoops. Did that wrong. And then we'll grab the name. The screen name. Oh, got a comma in there. Go ahead and grab location. Now, obviously, location won't always be provided because location is an option whether or not someone wants to share it. But if they do, it might be, I have a couple ideas on how we can use that location or some fun things that we can do with it. And then anything else in here? Yes, we said we want follower account. And we'll go ahead and grab friends as our last one. All right, I think we're good there. So real quick, I do know that, okay, so first of all, let's just take this out. I think they're right there. There we go. Format this, transform. All right, so what do we get as our output? So inside of our output here, we have everything that we are looking for. We have the created, we have the ID, we have the ID string. Now, I brought both of these in because I wasn't sure what it was gonna do. And as we can see right here, 
ID gave us two different ones. So like two tweets maybe? Uh, 553, 553. So it gave us this one. Okay, so the, yep, this one tells us how many different ones we have below it. We have that one. And I'm guessing that's the only one. So we have the, this ID and this ID. Okay. Now, I think all we need is the ID string, the first one for the tweet. So let's go ahead and get rid of that one. Oh, hang on. Let's bring this back in here. Let's say we're gonna get rid of this one right here, keep the string version, because we don't have to worry about separating it out and all that good stuff. It's in an array as well, because there's two values in there. Okay, we also have text. Text looks good to me. Source looks good, name looks good, screen, location, follower account. And friend. Oh, well, that looks pretty helpful. Okay, so we just made that change up there. Uh, we don't see anything else that we looks like we need to fix here. Although I did have to fix one earlier. Try to remember what I had to do real quick. Uh, let me look. I was fixing created at, and I. D string created at is good. ID string is good. Okay, so you know what? Looks like we won't need to do anything else. Let's format this. Transform. There we go. Keep it only what we want to see. So we can go ahead and save the spec we just made. Save that. Close. And there we go. So now we have a little path here where we are creating that, we're getting our tweet, tweets. So let's go ahead and get a wait in here. And we'll give that a quick little test. Success. And time to check it out and make sure the jolt works as well. So start and start. Stop those two now. Let's go ahead and let this one finish processing. And let's list it. You can see the the sizes of these slow files are much smaller now. And there we go. Only the information we're really looking to keep here. So this is much help. This is very helpful. And we can see location here when it's in the right language. That or <laughs> not the right language, but it's in a language I know. We can see Auckland, New Zealand. So we have a location there. Okay, so I think we're good here. And this will probably be it for this one. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a couple, we're gonna make another change. We're gonna learn something new and just give you an idea what that's gonna be. We're gonna do query record. So the query record lets us evaluate one or more SQL queries against the contents of a flow file. The result of the SQL query then becomes the content of the output flow file. So this can be used, or uh, well, okay, like it says, it can be used for filtering on specific fields and all that good stuff, transformation, low level filtering, column renaming, simple calculations, aggregations. I mean, basically whatever, you, just about anything you can do in regular SQL, you can do here, or T-SQL, you can do here as well, using this flow. So we'll add this one next, and we'll go ahead and use it to make a couple changes or filter onto our data. There's multiple ways to do it, but this is another one we can use as well. So I'll catch you next time. This is the end of this video. Uh, remember down below, if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And if you have any questions or anything like you'd like to see, use those comments down there to make me aware of it. And feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the content and you want to see more and be notified when the next one comes out. I'll talk to you then.